So guys, Ben Barrows here, also known as Random Crown. Back for the final vid of this $4 Bounty Builder hand history review. We've now made it to the final table and we're dealt the Pocket Rockets, the Aces, the Alcoholics Anonymouses themselves, and we take this as a great sign that we're going to shivity dip it. And we open from the hijack, small blind calls, get a queen queen jack, two hearts board, and we just see bet since there's just a lot of draws, we don't want to give them a free turn, but we are still a bit apprehensive about the, the two queens out there. So we still had a bet though, but yeah, I mean, yeah, against that stack size, yeah, we're just getting it. We're bet calling. Like, they'll go with a jack, and they'll go with draws, like two hearts, like 9, 10, king, 10. So, yeah, I mean, we just got to get it in against that stack size. You know, like, they don't have enough to make us fold. But, like, if we were way deeper, and we bet here, and they raised us, you know, we could consider getting away from the aces. But, yeah, I mean, with these stacks, we just got to bet call. So we, we bet and just take it down instead. It's a fine way to start off the FT. Looks like if we just fold this all in. King Queen suited on the cutoff. Facing a min race from under the gun. And a call from the hijack. And we decide to just over call here as well, because King Queen suited plays pretty great post flop, especially since we have position. And we don't really want to shippity dip it in at this juncture of the tournament because there are some shorter stacks than us. So it's better for us to play a bit more conservatively and try and ladder up the pay jumps. And when we ship in, you know, we might get in like against better hands from under the gun because, you know, like they should be raising a tighter range there. But at the same time, they will be looser in general because they have a massive stack. And for that same reason, we can discount the range that Turtle Bird is calling with there. Like, they're probably on the looser side because they got a lot of ships themselves. So, I mean, for those reasons, you know, like, it's okay to go along with King Queen suited. But at the same time, I think it's equally fine to flat. So, we just do so. And we flop great for us two overs and a floosh draw. And we could bet there on the flop. I think it'd be completely fine. I mean, we have plenty of equity. But the thing is, if we bet, we got to be prepared to bet call. And we don't really want to do so again at this part of the FT because, like, there's a bunch of stacks that could bust before us. And, you know, we could just make some easy money by, you know, just, yeah, again, I guess playing uh, more slowly. So we decided to just check back and realize the pre-equity. And that's the thing as well, like, one of these players might have the A side flush draw, and it would, you know, be unfortunate to get it in against that kind of hand, because then, yeah, we would have, you know, pretty poor equity. So we decided, yeah, just take a free card, and thankfully we improved with our pair of kings. And we are facing a less than quarter size delay C bet, easily call our top pair, and they bet about a quarter pot on the river, which we make a floosh with, and it's a very easy raise for value, and we make it a little more than the minimum to encourage them to stay in. You know, like, if they have a king, maybe they'll still call, and, I mean, they're never folding a seven. So, just whatever it is that they're betting for value, we want to keep them in. You know, like, this is a lot more inviting than all in, which, you know, would definitely fold out king ten, in my opinion. And still, King-10 is a pretty poor call there against, you know, a raise on the river in general, but especially on a, what, three flush, four straight board. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty ambitious. But, I mean, that's why we sized it like that, so they would make the side call. Oh, yeah, just muck it to the... Or wait, that guy limps? Yeah, but on such a stack size, it looks super strong, so... Yeah, no reason to overlook behind. 
with ace jack under the gun. We make a 2.5x and shippity depth the bleezies. Now we have 10 jack suited in the BBZ. Facing an all in from under the gun plus Uno. And we call. Like, we're just getting good enough odds. Excuse me, they had like eight blinds. 10 jack suited is just a snap call against that stack size, especially since we're in the BB. I mean, like, it's, it's pretty much only a call when you're in in the BB. Um, you could, you know, call from another position, uh, just depending on how many chips you have. Like, if you have a lot, then yeah, you could call 10 jack suited, especially if they have, if they have a big bounty. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're just getting direct odds to call there, plus the bounty factor. Yeah, I mean, it's a clear call. Thankfully, we shippity dip it. Now we have pocket sixes on the Bootin. And open. BB defends. We got a 7 4 deuce, 2 spade board. We bet around a quarter pot. They raise, and we call because they're not really repping much, right? Like, what are they raising with here, right? Like, I mean, they're repping what, like, what, pocket twos, pocket fours, pocket sevens, four seven, four deuce, seven deuce, and I don't think they always call like seven deuce off or four deuce off pre. They probably call seven four off, I imagine, with that stack. Um, but they also have like flush draws. They also have straight draws. But we block some of them, which I think is significant. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have like five, six, and six, eight, like that much less of the time since we have two of the sixes. And they're also just going to have air, I think. Like, they're going to put us on a weak hand because we, you know, are betting so small and it's such a good board to see bet light. So they figure that, you know, since we're raising wider on the button in the first place, that we're just going to be C betting, you know, lightly as well. So maybe they can just raise big and just take it down. And because of that, I think we have to call with sixes because, like, it's a pretty good board for them. And, like, there's only so many things that they can, like, legitimately have here. And, like, if they have something like Ace 7. It's doubtful they raise. They probably just call that. So I think it's fine to just call and then reevaluate the turn because our call should look very strong to them. So they'll slow down because, you know, we could still have like a big pair. We could have a set. So I think they'll play honestly enough against us when we call here to make it worthwhile. And we make it really easy when we just turn the set and they check. We bet because there's, you know, a lot of straight draws, still flush draws, so we gotta protect our hand. But we make it, you know, a little less than half pot to hopefully, you know, induce them to check raise this again. Don't wanna make it too strong to make it clear that we're committed to the hand. But um, yeah, definitely gotta put a bet out there though. We can't just check back, there's just too many bad river cards. But yeah, unfortunately they fold. But at the same time, like, that is a good thing because it means our read on the flop was right. Like, you know, sixes was probably already best anyway. Ace-queen suited. Under the gun plus deuce. A 2.5 exit and should be the pleasies. Now king five suited in the BB easy. And we just walk it out. Now we got the Jeezies and the small Beezy. And we just raise a bit more than the minimum to try and induce a shippy dip from the BB, but they just figure you fold instead. Five cents. Facing a min raise from under the gun plus Uno. And three bit cutoff, easy fold. Now we have ten eight suited in SB, and we again just do what we were referring to in previous videos. We effectively go all in, but we don't actually go all in. We raise about half their stack to make it look stronger, or like make it not as easy for them to just like you know get it in with like ace deuce off or like you know yeah you know, like king seven off or something. And we just get through. Now we have cowboys under the gun and ship the blinds.
Got eight nine off on the Bootin. Raise it up. Get it in against the BB, who has hardly any more chips. Just flop a pair of eights and just hold against the nine six suit. Got the jizzles under the geezy. Easy call after the small beezy. Shippity dips it in. And we higgity hold against the pocket fours. Now we got the eight nine suited four handed. We higgity call on the Small blue easy, flop top two. We check to induce, they bet, and we just call. I think it'd probably be better to raise here because there's a lot of draws. I mean, plenty of turns can make a straight or a flush, but at the same time, if we think they have just complete air, then it's fine to just check call here to induce them to keep barreling. We get a six on the turn, and put that a straight. Check, they check back. Rivers is seven, puts four to straight on board, no point in value betting now. So we just check, you know, and we'll consider check calling if they bet, but we'll probably check fold just because, you know, they could easily have a straight. Thankfully, you know, top two is still good. Pocket threes in the BB. The trees. And we get them in range in the cutoff, small one calls, we call as well, easily. Just getting great odds. Going to make that siggity set. And just completely miggity miss on this Jack 787 board and fold to the Betsky Wetsky. Now you have King 3 off on the Bootin. Easy riggedy riz. And shippy dip bliggity blazies. King 9 off under the gun. Easy open. BB calls, got a 1038 rainbow board. And C bet, it's a good one to do so. They call, so then we just give up on the turn that we miss. And they bet the river, easy figgy fold. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a horrible call. I think they'll have some missed straight draws, but I think they're just going to have yeah, a 10x or 8x there a lot as well. And we're just walking out of the 7-5. We got the ace jack suited on the bootin. Min open. Get it in against the BB. Easily call. They're less than 10 BB shove. River a pair of jacks to add some more chips to our stacks. Now we are three handed. Have 10 8 off the BB. Easy fold though, it is 3x what happened there so this is pretty quick FT guys so button opens BB ships it for a little more than 20 blinds and it's called they have ace 4 up against ace king and they hope and now we're heads up yeah I don't know if you guys saw my 162 bounty builder hand history review but the FT lasted a lot longer so now we have King 10 suited, we raise on the button, they call, we uh, get an ace high board, and we decide not to C bet. Interesting. I think it's better to C bet here, but I think maybe we were thinking our king high could still be good, and maybe we could just like check behind and induce bluffs or something on the turn, just you know, potentially call them down. Or I think maybe we were just going for the delay C bet. But, um, yeah, I mean, regardless, um, yeah, I think c betting here is probably best. Especially with our yeah, backdoor flush draw, ace-high board, I and mean, we just have the range advantage. So I think it just makes the most sense to bet here. But, you know, sometimes you got to mix it up. The check, we just check back, figuring our king-high is good. So I guess we're just trying to check it down, you know, just figuring out king-high would be best. Okay, and we just call on the river, and they just have an ace somehow. Like, they didn't. 3 bit pre, which is no surprise, you know, with a a weak ace like that, just ace three off. Yeah, it makes sense to just call. 
But yeah, good thing for us we didn't see bet the flop. So yeah, that's that's the thing. I think that's why we checked because this player just was like a bit tighter and like just did some weird stuff. And basically, they just played more face up, and we didn't really expect them to do anything weird and, and bluffy. So we could just like, yeah, Ruki just try and check it down. That was the thing, like. But at the same time, like, once we get to the river, and they, they didn't bet the turn, that's the thing. Like, that's why we call it the river. Um, because, you know, we figure if they have an ace, they're going to bet the turn, you know, to protect against the flush draw, and, you know, just get some value from their hand, because it doesn't look like we have an ace. But, yeah, I mean, that's the tricky thing about heads up, guys. Like, so many different ways to play hands. You know, it's all about, like, developing a dynamic with your opponent. You know, like, there are certain moves that are, you know, certainly GTO, but at the same time, you know, like, game flow goes beyond GTO you know like once you have like an established rhythm with someone or know their tendencies you know you gotta take non-standard lines and yeah we just decided to call the river because we you know figured they can't have an ace much because they probably would bet the turn with it but you know they proved us wrong so kudos to them nice hand turtle bird Lock that with the jack eight and the BB. Now we easily raise the oh what? We just Oh no, yeah, we do raise, we raise. Raise the king six on the button. Yeah, I mean any king heads up is the nuts, definitely wanna raise any button you have with it. It wouldn't be horrible with a limp, but you know, I think you should raise until they start playing back at you. And once they do, that's when you can start an open limping strategy. Now we have ace queen on the button. And we open, take down. Now we have ace four in the BB. Let's get a walk. King three, easy open. And we get a king jack eight, two diamond board. Easily see that with our top pair, back to our flu straw. And double barrel because they're gonna have you know plenty of worse pairs jacks and eights plus draws ten queen ten nine plus draws, but they check raise us interesting, and so once they do so, it's a very easy fold because their range is gonna be weighted towards like two pair. I think yeah they could have like a slow play like jack eight or king eight or king jack could have yeah just turned you know two pair like you know king deuce jack deuce. Maybe like deuce eight suited. Um, it's doubtful they have pocket twos, but they could have called a flop with it. And they probably three bet eights pre. I mean, they definitely three bet kings and jacks pre. But I mean, they could call with eights. So they might be, you know, just check raising there. But they probably three bet pre and they probably raise the flop. So yeah, I think they have some sort of two pair hand here. But yeah, regardless, like, yeah, it's just too much to call. Yeah, and just too weak of a kicker. So. Yeah, just let them have it because they're just going to show up with it so much there, especially since they were like a more straightforward player. Now we have ace nine off BB. And we walk it out. Now we have ace jack suited on the bootin. We riggedy riz, they kickity call. And we flop the nut flu straw, then over. And they check call our bet. And then we just check it back, try and realize some equity on the river, and then they bet and just easily fold. Now we have queen nine on BB. Get a nine eight five two diamond board. Just check call their C bet. And we easily check call their double barrel. Top here is still usually gonna be a heads up most of the time. And we just Check the river, brings out four to straight and four to flush. So we were easily going to fold to a bet, and you know, they actually just had top two the entire time. Now we have pocket fives on the button. I think we could raise that, but I think limping is acceptable as well. Just keep the pot smaller, and then we can, you know, just try and just take down post. But I think raising is also fine. Just try and just get more money in the pot when we have a pair, which is likely best. But, uh, yeah, so they have king five, 
and we ended up what, betting the, the flop. I don't know. They bet the flop. All right, that makes more sense. So yeah, we definitely got a call because they're just gonna be betting with air there. That's why we limp to induce that kind of thing. And then we just check it down and ship it against the king five. And queen eight suited in the BB. And you get a walk ski. Ace eight off on the Bhutan. Easy raise. You get a peel from the BB. You get a jack three three. And easy. Well, I mean, it's fine to check back like we did. But I think it'd be also cool to just to see that. I mean, we have the best hand there, so we want to protect our equity with our ace high. Plus, we have the backdoor flush draw going for us if they have a jack or, you know, like some sort of medium pair. You know, and we could potentially barrel them off of it if we turn the flush draw. But I think, yeah, I mean, just checking back to just try and check down our hand as well is fine. You know, ace high has plenty of showdown value, so since they've already proven that they're not really a bluffer, you know, we can just try and get it to the river for cheap and hope we take it down. And that's exactly what happens. Queen eight off in the BB. And we easily call this button min raise. Get a queen seven four rainbow board. And just bet the turn after checks turn the flop. And just take it down to the top pair. Yeah, definitely got a bet there. A lot of flush and straight draws when we protect our equity. Then we have ace seven, and just open and take down. Then we pot kings, BB. They limp, we raise, and they ship it, which is unexpected, but awesome because we have the second best hand in no limit Texas Hold'em. So we snap call them off, and unfortunately, the board runs out of straight for us to chop it up against the deuces. Then we get the ace queen off the next hand. And we open. Get a king high board. And again, we're just trying to play conservatively. Just check it down when we have like ace highs and whatnot, since, you know, they just check it down a lot too, unless they have it. And we call bet, since that's what we were inducing on the flop, you know, hoping that they would maybe bet later. I mean, I know they don't bluff too much, but still, ace-queen high is too good to fold to a bet there. And they just turn bottom pair. And now we have deuce four. If we just check if they limp. Check call on the flop when we make bottom pair. And then we just chop it up, since they have four as well, but all the cards on the border higher than both of our kickers. Nine four off, not going to be good enough to raise there. Ace King is suited. Facing a min raise from the button, we just 3x, a little more than 3x, 3 bet, and take it down. Deuce 7 off. Looks like we get feisty on the button here. And side to raise, since again, they're just not playing back at us often enough, so we can start raising any 2 on the button. And just get a queen on board, just see better with a backdoor flush draw, and take it down. 7-5 suited. And the BB. Easy chiggity check. And then we get a king six jack two diamond board. Jack on the turn. Doesn't change anything. And deuce on the river. Again, doesn't improve anything, so we're just done with this hand. And they take it down with A side. Now we have king eight on the Bhutan. We min raise, BB defends, get a 6 3 jack, 2 heart board. We just check it back, try to show down our king high, just fold to the min bet in the turn. And yeah, they could easily have a piece of that. Yeah, I mean, it's doubtful they ever use that sizing as a bluff. I have 3 6 in the BB, not good enough to defend with. Queen 7 on the Bhutan. Easy open, they call. Get an ace queen nine to club board. And we check back our second pair. Yeah, we're doing a lot of checking back here. Um, yeah, just trying to keep these spots small until we actually have a real hand. Yeah, we 
easily call the turn bet and chop it up again. Both have a pair of queens since there was a pair of nines on the board and an ace. Neither of our kickers play. Now we have queen at 10 off in the BB. Get another Walkski. Queen 5 off on the Bootin. Easy open. They call. Flop top pair. Got a bet for value and protection since there's flush and straight draws galore. And definitely got to bet the turn pretty hard, you know, since it brings out yeah, some straights. And there's that many more bad rivers now. We don't want to see any 8 or 10 or king. And then, of course, no heart. So definitely just got to bet and take it down. Now I'm jack 9 suited in the BB. They limp. We check. Just missed the flop. They check it back. We turn an open ender, so it's good enough for us to bet at. Any king or 8 makes us a straight. River is a queen, and we decided to just bet here, hoping that they had like a flush draw, or a straight draw, or even like, yeah, like ace high. I mean, I guess ace high I'd probably call, but uh, yeah, yeah, if they have like, yeah, some sort of nine jack, king jack, yeah, you know, like seven eight, eight nine, you know, like two random clubs, yeah, like all those hands will fold now, so I think we. We'll you know, show a profit by betting here. I think it's reasonable. Because we can easily have tens or queens. Um, but then they raise, so obviously they get tens or queens. <laughs> then we have king queen on the button. We open, they call. We get an ace ace seven two spade board. They check, we check back. Again, just trying to show down our king queen high. The nut no pair hand. And of course, we call their turn min bet and they check we just check back no reason to bet now our hand could still be good and it is we have seven eight in the bb facing a button limp we check you check flop second pair and a straight draw pretty good for our hand easy check call better to check call rather than bet there to just let them bet air and we just turn it straight again which is great and river trips, you know, which doesn't really change anything, but uh, we end up just, yeah, we see bet, try and yeah, get some value out of whatever they had. No, it looks like the trips did actually matter because they made, you know, three sevens. So they paid us off. And if it hadn't been a seven, they probably would have followed because of the four to a straight out there. Four deuce not good enough to raise from the button. I mean, we could. We raised seven deuce, but, you know, we'll let them have a pot every once in a while. And we king nine suited in the BB. Get king seven deuce rainbow board after they raise pre. And then we usually just bet the turn for value. Our top pair and flush draw. Just take it down. Now we have king six on the button. Easy open. Oh, we flat really well. Bottom pair and the nut flush draw on the ace high board. Great one to Siggity see bet. And we just double barrel with our equity and take it down on the blank eight turn. And we have ace 10 off in the BB. Button limps. Oh, excuse me. And we 3x. ISO, a little more than 3x, so they're ace 10. We just figured out how the best hand here the majority of the time. So, just gotta raise it up for value, make it a little more than 3x to give them more odds. Yeah, you just definitely want to price them out as much as you can. Ace 7 9 2 spade board. We bet about a half pot, they call. And we just bet about a half pot again. Blank deuce turn. Definitely want to charge draws. And that's why we check this blank river, because if they did indeed have a draw, then they missed. Because, like, no straight got there, no flush got there. So if they have, you know, a busted draw, no way they can call a bet. So we definitely want to just check to let them bluff. So we do. And they do as well with their missed straight draw. 7-5 suited on the button. Easy open. BB calls. Wow, we flop pretty decent. Got a straight draw and a flush draw. So see that. 
turn straight and bet small for value to hopefully induce them to come along and bet about half pot on the river and that's a bit too much for them and they could have had like a missed draw as well like jack x or two diamonds or they could even have like 10x and they're just scared by the ace get deuce jack just walk it out Make four jack open get a five eight queen rainbow board see that take it down jack seven facing a min raise this is good enough to defend, especially now since we have the chip lead. Get a 10-4-9, two hearts board. Check call with our gut shot, and over. And also plan on bluffing the river if they check back the turn. And instead they just bet about half pot, which makes it a very easy fold. A 10-5 suited. Easy min open, and take down. it off on the button. Easy open, BB calls, get a 7 10 5, 2 clubs board. And see that take down. Yeah, 3 9 off, not good enough to raise. Just let him have it. 3 9 suited. Looks like we played this as well. They. Oh no, he's folded. So they open with fold. Fold. A lot of three nines here, guys. We. They open limp. We just cheaty check. Just miggity miss in this jack high board. And let him take it down. Now we have jack three suited and the. Uh, button, open, get a king deuce deuce, rainbow board, easy seabed, they call, yeah, backdoor flush draw, king high rainbow board, definitely a good one to seabed, but once they call, easy give up, 10-6, just muck, 4-6 on the button, we open, they call, get a 6-10 ace rainbow board, Check it back, get a eight on the turn. Check it back. We're just trying to yeah, just get a cheap showdown with our fourth pair. And we do so. And they just rivered the bottomest of the pairs and we should be dip it. Now we have ten jack in the BB. Queen six six rainbow board. And yeah, we just check it down since we don't really have anything and decided to just bluff the river since we could have made a flush or a straight or be value betting like a five or perhaps like a slow plate six but we probably would have bet the turn with that just trying to get him to fold out like ace high or king high but they call with their ace high which is to be expected with ace king since it's like the, the nut no pair now we have ace queen, and we open. We get a king queen four two diamond board. Ten on the turn, and what? Interesting. So we're raising for thin value here. They bet the men, so we read that as weakness, but for value. We figure they have like a queen or a ten. And obviously, if they have a queen, it's going to be worse than ace-queen, so we might as well risk their value. So we figure if they had a king, they'll bet more, because there's a lot of draws out there, so they wouldn't protect. So yeah, I think it's fine to raise here for value, actually, because they'll still call with a lot of those worst pairs. And then we can just check back the river, or even value bet if, you, if we think that they could still call if it's like a blank. So we 3x it. They call, and it's actually the best river besides like a queen for us, or a jack. 
it's a king, so it makes it less likely they have a king, and makes it really easy for us to just go for thin value. And we bet about half pot, and do indeed get called by, yeah, worse, they just turned a pair of tens and paid us off. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, kind of loose by them, it looks like they were slowing down, you know, since this is a sort of lengthy heads-up match. We get queen four. How did we call this? Okay, so the button limps, and then we. Okay, we decided to get saucy. We uh, made it a little more than three x, and just figured that we would take it down pre a lot since their button limping range will be a bit lighter. So. Yeah, we just try and just take it down. Yeah, and even if they call, like we're gonna have the range advantage since we raise pre, and they won't really have any big pairs where we could, and, you know, like a lot of strong aces as well. So yeah, we just let's bump it up, get a nine seven deuce all club board, which we obviously completely miss, but it's still good enough to see that because if they don't have a club, it's gonna be hard for them to call. So we do so, but they do call, and then it's an easy just check fold for us on the turn. Now we have 7-6 on the button. Easy min open. BB 3 bets to more than 3x, so very standard fold. Jack 9 off the BB. Button limps. We chiggity check. Get a 7-7 seven, seven, deuce to spade board. Check check. King of the turn. Yeah, I mean, just check fold the bet. Pretty easy. 7-8 suited on the button. Easy iggity open. They call. Got a 6 8 ace, 2 spade board. Check, check. And we turn straight drizzle. Just try and check it down. Seems to be our main strategy against this guy. Yeah, we're really only like betting hard when we have it. But I figure, you know, it is, you know, good enough to bet now here on the river since he hasn't bet yet. So 8's you know, likely best. And they do indeed call us with the worst pair. Now we have 78 again, flop an open ender, and take it down with that. Now we have king jack on the button. Open, they call, we get an ace high board. And I think it'd be fine to see that as well, but at the same time, we're just trying to keep these pots smaller and easy fold on the queen of clubs turn, four to a flush out there, so we have. Just absolutely nothing. Easy fold to the bet. Seven five suited, get a walk. Queen four suited in the button. Z raise. Just take it down. Three jack in the BB. Easy fold. Seven six on the button. Easy open. And I get a queen jack five rainbow board. And just check it back. Or excuse me, we, we bet. Okay, so yeah, we raise and then we we, we were gonna go for the delay C bet. I think we might as well see bet there. But at the same time, it's all situational. It just depends on your opponent. You know, like again, if they're not really putting you in tough spots, you know, it's it's fine to just delay C bet and stuff, just mix it up. Never want to be too predictable. And especially since we didn't really have much equity. Like we just had a backdoor straight draw, so. I think it's fine to just give up. And try and take it down a later street. But when they bet, obviously we have to fold. And now we get a king nine seven board. Our suited king. Uh, top pair, pretty good heads up. And we easily bet the turn for value after he checks back on the flop. Take it down. Nine jack on the button. Easy open. Flop top two, not too shabby. And C bet. And they call. Turns ten of clubs, puts out a lot of draws. Flush got there, and plenty of straight draws are there. So that's why we bet it harder now, like two thirds. We want to protect our equity. And they just let it go. Pocket tens. In the BB, easy three bet once they 
open when they get a little more than 3x and just take it down ace deuce off on the button we open they call six queen five rainbow board check check eight in the turn and we call figure they're gonna be good here a lot but it's just a min bed so we're getting decent enough odds to hopefully peel an ace on the river and if not perhaps they'll just have you know something works occasionally the king jack just damn yeah, jack 10 but um you just stand yeah, up having to what, fold to the river bet yeah can't really call there looks like they definitely have a piece of it now we have a deuce eight suited and button mid opens we call flop a flush draw and over and they bet we call turn a straight draw check check and we ended up missing the river but since they check back the turn you know it doesn't mean that they have a five because they definitely would have bet it to protect their equity same with like straights and over pairs yeah, I mean, like, once they check back the turn, like, it looks like they don't really have much, so it seems like a good opportunity to bet since we could easily have, yeah, a five or a straight. Well, they just call us, they just keep high. Correctly. You know, just probably deducing that, you know, there's enough misdraws out there, so it's, it's worthwhile to still call the time. So, well played, sir. Nintendo suited. Easy open pre. We decided to just min bet the flop. Since it's a rainbow board, not that connected, so we'll probably miss it a lot, and min bet will be effective enough. But they call. We just turn a pair of deuces, and we just check back easily, and try and get a cheap showdown. And then thankfully, we get a 10 on the river to seal the deal. We got a nice two pair. And we go for the over bet. Interesting. So there's 800k in the middle, and we bet 1.2 million. So. Yeah, we make it like about 1.5x pot, hoping to rep just air. Because we min bet the flop and it looks, you know, like we don't really have anything after we check the turn. So, yeah, we were just trying to just make it look like a silly line, like, you know, something that wasn't believable. So they would be more inclined to pay us off with like a 3 or a 6 or maybe even ace high. But looks like... Yeah, they just didn't really have much, or you know, they read a bigger bet as strength, so they just fold their modest pair, or ace high. Now we have five six off the BB button opens. We call get a five three king board easy check call, and we turn trippity trips. And they check back, and then we easily value at the river, and they fold. Deuce jack on the bootin. Easy open. They three bet. Easy fold. Deuce three suited in the BB. They limp. We chickety check. Get an ace five nine rainbow board. Check check. King on the turn. Each check fold. Ace king on the bootin. Raise it up. Take it down. 610 suited in the BB. Bootin raises. We call. Get a king 8 to 10 for middle pair. And backdoor floosh draw and straight draw. They bet. We easily call. And we decided to just fold to their turn double barrel because we don't think they're doing it too lightly. I think they're just going to have a king here a lot. Queen four on the button. Easy open. They three bet. And it's an easy fold. Seven ten off on the BB. They min raise. We call. Get a king nine five, two spade board. Check, they check. Four in turn doesn't change anything. Easy check fold. 
portent suited on the button. We open, they call, the flop middle pair and back to our flush draw. Check, check, we turn the flush draw. Now we bet for value and take down. Jack, queen, the BB. They limp, we 3x and ship it up. up. Four deuce, looks like we just fold this. Not going to be good enough for us to come in for a raise with. Ace jack on the BB. And just get a walk. 3 8 suited. The button. Oh, looks like this is a pretty juicy pot. We open, they call. 6 deuce 6. Just rainbow board. We have a backdoor flush draw and a straight draw. And overs, we bet. Oh, and then we turn the flush draw. They min bet into us, and we easily call with our equity. And they bet the river about half pot when we bink our floosh, so of course we raise, since they could easily have a six or even an ace and pay us off. So we want to get some value. And they call. With trips. And that gives us a nice chip lead. And momentum in this heads-up match. Now we have seven, eight on the button. BB calls. I get an ace, seven, jack, all hearts board. Flop bottom pair. Not really good enough to bet though. And they min bet the turn, just a heart. And we just call, just hoping that our bottom pair is good enough. But they were just thin value betting top pair, so. Good for them, I see. Jack Queen in the BB. We defend the button open and check call when we turn top pair. Check call when we still probably have the best hand on the turn that didn't change much. And then river just goes check check and we shippy dip it against pocket tens that was thin value betting the turn now we have pocket jacks on the button mid open they call get a king eight eight two spade board we check it back going for the delay c bet or trying to pick off bluffs and they min bet the 10 turn and we're gonna call some rivers, but an ace is a bad one. Like, yeah, I could have an ace, they could have a king, they could have an eight, so jack's no good there. Five, three suited in the BB. Facing a min raise from the button, we call. Get a king, jack, 60 spade board. Turn a straight draw, but just check it down. No real point in betting there and we chop it up with five high that's hilarious we have pocket sevens on the button got a jack five three two diamond board we bet well less than half pot try and get value from five or three and draws and ace highs and we double barrel the turn for value because it's less likely they have a jack when it pairs and check back the river since now it's probably too thin to value bet although I think it would have been fine uh, especially yeah since the river let's see, let's yeah the river missed the flush draw so they could put us on a missed draw and still call with a 5 or a 3 so yeah I think it'd be fine to bet the river actually I think it'd be kinda cool yeah I bet like 800k yeah I like that a lot actually but uh, I think checking is the more standard route. And then queen four off. Button opens. He's fade fold. Deuce ten suited. Gotta raise the button. BB calls. Getting ace seven five. 
club someone diamond board. We just see that and they call easily. Just give up on the turn, like straight and flush got there. And they actually just turned a pair of sixes. And we were ahead somehow on the flop with our 10 high, which is amusing. But yeah, I mean, we were just giving up on that anyway. We didn't really have anything. You know, we have jack seven off on the button, easy open. Seven four on the BB, easy fold. But. We just get a walk because they figured he fold their button and pocket eights button there. Seven four would have been an okay defend, I guess they've been raised. I think seven three is probably fold though. But easy open on the button. Get a king nine three, two clubs board, six clubs on the turn. They've got the turn. And we min raise? Why did we do that? How did this hand go? Alright, so we min raise the pre, and we get a king high board, and we min raise the turn. Why did we do that? I guess we put them on like a six or a three, or maybe ace high, and just figured, you know, we can get some thin value from them this way. And this way, we have like initiative in the hand now, so they can't, or it's like it's more unlikely for them to lead out in the river and size. Uh, like however they want, they could bet a bit bigger. So this way we just min bet, or just like raise the minimum here, and then we can just check back a lot of rivers without having to call a bet. And get a jack of clubs in the river, protect quarter flush, and they just were two pairs. So we actually we were right, We they had a six, and we were getting value from them, but they just got there. I mean, we were giving them the right odds to that as well. But um, I think there is merit behind min raising there to just kind of keep the pot smaller and disallow them from leading again. Now we have nine deuces suited in VB. Button calls. We check. Queen 7 7, rainbow board. King hearts on the turn. He's old. 10-4 off on the bootin. Just open. And they have three badges, two X, which looks super strong. 10-4 off doesn't play very well post, so we just let go. 6-4 suited on the BB. They open, we call. Get a 6-3-5 all spades board. Check, check. We bet the min with our second pair and open under straight draw. I think we could bet more here. But we just, you know, I guess we're trying out just new stuff since this guy didn't seem to be playing, you know, too fancy. Like, he wasn't, like, playing back of us. He was being more straightforward. So just trying to get some value maybe from, like, a 5 or 3 or ace high or, you know, induce him to call with, like, king high or, you know, just, like, some air hand. There's, like, two overs that he just wants to see river with. But I think that's probably not... Optimal, I think. Yeah, we want a bit bigger to, I guess, discourage those hands from folding. But uh, we min bet and they call, and now we get a queen on the roof, and easy fold when they bet. I mean, yeah, I think they could have a jack here in betting, or they could have a queen here somehow. I mean, it's not terrible to call actually, because I think they will have some missed draws as well, and we were inducing that by min betting the turn, but. Yeah, that's why you just try not to do that sort of thing. Just put yourself in tough spots. But, uh, you know, just, again, got to try new things, mix it up. That's what Heads Up is all about. You know, just creating a new dynamic with your opponent. And just playing off it accordingly. And now we have 10-6 off on the button. Easy open. Ace-4-7, two-diamond board. And we see that and take it down. Our backdoor flush and straight draw. A side board's a perfect one to see what he see bet with. Get 4 9 suited in the BB. Button opens. We defend. We get a queen 5 4 2 diamond board. Turns a blank 6. Just checking it down. Open our bottom pair is good. And we call it off in the river. And they rivered top 
or excuse me, second pair top kicker. So nice hand. King deuce is suited. We open. Day three bet. And we fold. Six ten off the BB. Facing a min raise, we defend. So we can make a straight. Get a king three deuce to clubs board. Get a five of clubs on the turn. We C bet. Excuse me, not C bet, but we put a bet out there with our open edit. Excuse me. Uh, six high straight draw, four big straight, and then we had a ten high flush draw. Take it down with our equity. Min raise the seven six on the button. Get a king jack three rainbow board, and take it down with our quarter pot C bet. Just get a walk here with the snowman, and just fold the sixties. Not good enough to open seven five. Facing an open limp, and we just check, check and figgy fold on this board that we completely miss. We have the five jack on the button. Open it. Get a ace three four rainbow board. Easy c bet. They call. Get a queen on the turn. Puts out a backdoor flush draw. And we just check back and fold to their bet. King seven the BB. Facing the min raise. Easy to defend. Get a six eight queen two spade board. Check check. We get a seven on the excuse me, four on the turn. Which gives us a straight draw. We put out a bet on the river, four to a flush. It's a good one to try and steal it on, but they call. And they have a pair of nines, that would be good for them. Five seven suited. On the button, we open it up. Get a four eight jack two diamond board. Get a four diamonds on the turn. And just easily fold their bet. Yeah, we I think it's probably better to bet the flop here though. Yeah, we have a straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. Yeah, I mean, we raise pre, so I think that's a good board to see bet. But, yeah, I mean, once we decide to check back and they bet, yeah, especially since it's like a three flush board uh, and we don't have a diamond, yeah, definitely better to fold there. King five suited on the BB. Let's walk it out. Queen nine suited on the button. We open. BB calls, got a three jack deuce rainbow board. We bet they call. And we get an ace on the turn of clubs because it's a flush draw, so we easily barrel it. Just got a lot of equity there. I mean, just, yeah, we can bink a club for flush, and then an ace is a good card bet because, you know, like if they have a jack or a three or a deuce, it's kind of hard to call. So we just want to put the pressure on. And oh wow, yeah, this is like one of the coolest hands of the tournament because this guy leads the river, and he only bets about quarter pot, so it looks like he's block betting. He could have a jack or maybe like a weak ace, and doesn't want to call a big bet from us, so he sets the tone of the hand by just betting out to see where he's at and when he makes it that size a quarter pot like what he's saying is I have an okay hand here but it can't stand to raise so if you raise me I'll fold so since that's what his bet is more or less saying you know it just makes the most sense to raise you know just take it down since we can't call we only have queen high so we shippity dip it in they figure fold and we regain our chip lead again and yeah, get some real momentum. Queen eight on the BB, easy defend against this ace, against this boot and raise. Get ace, 10, nine, two hearts board. And just end up, yeah, just folding the third delay C bet. Yeah, no real value in calling with our inside straight draw there, just one card to come. Now we have queen three suited on the button. Open, they defend the BB, we get a 10 king six rainbow board. We 
bet. And they fold. King nine off on the BB. They limp. We three X fold. King six on the button. We open. They fold. Just four. Just uh, walk it down. Pocket fours. Looks like we probably we ship this. No, we just open it. Yeah, I mean they have like a little more than twenty blinds. We could go all in, but you know, like they're playing really straightforwardly, so we can just you know gradually grind them down. No need to play higher variance pots. Queen four off in the button. We open. They call. Get a nine. Ace four board. We bet, they min raise, we call, we turn trips, they bet, we just call, to keep them in with their worst hands, and get an ace in the river, which is no bueno, because obviously they'd have a higher boat if they have an ace, but they check, so it looks like they probably don't. So then we bet, you know, for value, try and get, you know, 9x to call, or like some other pocket pair. And they call with queen high, surprisingly. It looks like, yeah, they're really, you know, just getting get an oi, as we say in the poker world, like oi, over it, since this is, it's pretty late in the night, it's been a long tournament, and this is like a really long heads up match, so, yeah, it looks like they're slowing down for sure. And we got 10-8 in the BB. Walk it out, 9-3, just muck the button, ace do suited, oh, and here we go, folks. The button shifts in for about 10 blinds. We easily called our suited ace. And shippity dip the $4 bounty builder after we higgity hole against the Jack 9 suited. So, thank you all for joining me for this lengthy final table vid. Hope you were able to stay with me the entire time. I know that you kind of dragged on for a bit, but that's. To the nature of heads up, you know, like, just play a lot of hands, you know, a lot of it is just, like, folding back and forth, you know, just raising, sea betting, you know, like, nothing too exciting. You just gotta play a lot, a lot of hands before you get any interesting action. But, um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching the $4 Bounty Builder Hand History Review. And again, as I said before, hope you guys learned a thing or two. So, um, yeah, until next time, shippity dip, out.